Starlink could be the end of astronomy. Can you believe that Starlink has just launched its 5,000th satellite in Earth's low orbit? That surely is a ton. But little do you know that this is just the beginning of Elon Musk's ambition to deploy over 42,000 Starlink satellites. This means high-speed internet for everybody. As beautiful as this dream seems for the common citizen who just wants to watch high-quality videos in the comfort of his home, this is an ultimate nightmare for the scientific community. Their observations are being severely disrupted by the near-Earth objects, creating very long light streams when long exposure pictures are taken. Will we reach a time when the stars will stop being accessible to us on Earth? And the only way to see them is through pictures from space-based telescopes. Are we ready to say goodbye to romantic stargazing nights in the desert or up in the mountains? Everything comes with pros and cons, so let's take a little look at what is going on here. Keep watching to find out more. A quick recap. Let's remember together what these little troublemaking satellites are made of. In order to make them the most effective and least costly, the satellites operate on solar panels that get charged during the day to be able to power the satellite throughout the night. This surely comes in useful when you need to ensure that the satellites can operate continuously without interruption. And as a bonus point, you get a sustainable and clean energy source that doesn't produce greenhouse gas emissions or other pollutants, reducing the environmental impact of space exploration and satellite operations. Starlink satellites are currently being deployed in low Earth orbit, which is approximately 550 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The aim is to create a global network of satellites that can provide internet coverage to even the most remote areas on Earth. As of now, Starlink has launched over 5,000 satellites, but the plan is to eventually deploy a total of 42,000 satellites. This ambitious goal is driven by Elon Musk's vision of bridging the digital divide and providing internet access to millions of people who currently lack it. How thoughtful! Now maybe you're still wondering, why so many satellites? Well, that is the only way to ensure global coverage considering the small distance from Earth at which they are orbiting. Okay then, you might wonder, why not go further away and use less satellites? The answer is quite simple, because this is the fastest way information can travel. If you were to compare it with Geosat, another internet provider which orbits the Earth at a distance of 36,000 kilometers, for every Geosat information round trip, Starlink makes 70. That means that we get 70 times the internet speed we are usually used to. And who wouldn't like that when you're very involved in the zombie killing video game you're playing or having the time of your life on a video call with your loved ones? Stars or Elon Musk? Nowadays, it seems like everywhere you look, you see Elon Musk. You look on your right, you see a Tesla pass by. You look on your left, you see his face next to Mark Zuckerberg's claiming to meet up for a physical fight. Now that he has successfully conquered our Earth, He's planning to conquer what surrounds it too. Jokes aside, a natural question comes to mind. How do we know what we are seeing while laying down on the grass stargazing? Are we actually stargazing or are we starlink gazing? And wouldn't that large number of satellites affect ground-based astronomy? As an astronomer, I would certainly be furious. But Elon Musk has an answer for everything. Seeing as the science community started revolting against the launch of his new satellites, Starlink has provided us with a solution – dark-coated satellites. So how does this work? Dark-coated satellites are designed to have a lower reflectivity, which means they would be less visible from the ground and would minimize the impact on ground-based astronomy. This coating would reduce the amount of sunlight reflected off the satellites, making them appear dimmer and less intrusive to observations. On one hand, this seems like a step in the right direction to address the concerns of astronomers. It shows that Elon Musk and his team are aware of the impact their satellite constellation could have on scientific research and are taking steps to mitigate it. 
After all, astronomers rely on clear and dark skies to gather valuable data about the universe. But some astronomers are skeptical about the effectiveness of dark-coated satellites. It is argued that even with reduced reflectivity, the sheer number of satellites in low Earth orbit could still create difficulties in observing faint celestial objects or distant galaxies. The concern is that the satellites, even if dimmer, could still produce streaks in long exposure images or interfere with telescopes' ability to detect and study distant celestial phenomena. And to add on that, even if dark-coated satellites are successful in reducing the impact on ground-based astronomy, there are other concerns that astronomers have raised. One major issue is the problem of radio interference. The Starlink satellites communicate with each other using radio signals, and this communication can potentially interfere with radio astronomy observations. Radio telescopes already struggle with mitigating interference from various sources, and the addition of thousands of satellites in close proximity definitely makes it so much worse. Space Debris Another concern is the potential for space debris. With 30,000 satellites planned to be deployed, the risk of collisions and the generation of space debris increases significantly. This debris poses a threat not only to other satellites but also to the International Space Station and future space missions. The accumulation of space debris in Earth's orbit could create a hazardous environment that limits our access to space. Oh great, just what we need, space debris. As if traffic on Earth wasn't enough, now we have to worry about interstellar traffic jams. Can you imagine a space version of rush hour? Sorry, Captain, we're going to be delayed. There's a pileup on the way to Mars. And let's not forget about the poor International Space Station. It's already floating up there, minding its own business, and now it has to dodge dangerous space junk. Talk about adding insult to injury. It's like playing a game of dodgeball, but the stakes are much, much higher. But hey, on the bright side, maybe all this space debris will give us some new sporting events. Can you imagine it as well? Satellite Dodgeball Championships, the ultimate test of reflexes and space navigation skills. Watch out for that old rocket booster, Bob. Alice is on the way. But in all seriousness, this issue highlights the importance of responsible space exploration. Let's hope that as we venture further into the cosmos, we can also find ways to clean up our space mess. Otherwise, we might have to start holding interplanetary garage sales to get rid of all that space junk cluttering up our orbits. Elon Musk once again proposes a solution and shows us once more how business is done. He proposed to regularly update his Starlink mega constellation with new technology every five years. When these satellites reach the end of their lifespan, they will be intentionally directed towards Earth's atmosphere where they will burn up. While this is definitely a positive step in preventing space debris, it quickly brings us to another problem regarding the high number of satellites burning in the upper layers of the atmosphere. This will have unforeseen impacts on the planet's atmospheric chemistry. A study published in Scientific Reports indicates that the burning of aluminum used in these satellites will result in the production of alumina, also known as aluminum oxide. Alumina has the potential to cause ozone depletion and interfere with the atmosphere's ability to reflect heat. These changes to Earth's atmospheric chemistry could have unintended consequences on the planet's climate balance, essentially creating an uncontrolled experiment in geoengineering. However, the long-term effects of these alterations are currently unknown. The concern is that these particles in the upper atmosphere may remain there forever. While the number of satellites burning in the atmosphere will be fewer than meteorites, the chemical composition of the satellites distinguishes them. The first generation of Starlink alone could result in approximately two tons of dead satellites re-entering the atmosphere each day, compared to the 60 tons of meteoroid material that enters the atmosphere daily. Meteoroids are primarily composed of rock, whereas the satellites are mainly made of aluminum, which is present in meteoroids in minimal quantities. The researcher Aaron Bowley cautions against underestimating our ability to alter the environment. He compares the situation to plastic pollution in the oceans and climate change resulting from human activities, emphasizing the importance of not repeating our past mistakes with space exploration. The Train Despite all the negative consequences that Starlink is imposing on scientific research and our Earth's habitability, 
It is still somewhat a pretty sight for us to watch the famous train of lights pass us by in the night sky. Let's see how you can spot them, and if you are lucky, you could even do it yourself. There is a time and a place for everything, so take good notes because this is precious information. The secret to spotting the train of lights is watching the sky a short period of time after they have been deployed. And lucky for you, the launches are so frequent that they happen almost every week. So stay tuned for the next launch expected to happen on September 6th. You can have access to multiple skywatching applications like Satellite Tracker or Starwalk 2. This will tell you exactly when and where to look if you are really interested. All you have to do is press on the search button and look for SpaceX's Starlink. An alternative to applications is a website called findstarlink.com, where all you got to do is plug in your country and city and it will tell you where to look. Unfortunately, and to keep our communication as honest as possible, the satellites are getting harder and harder to spot due to SpaceX's big effort in reducing reflectivity of the satellites. But hey, that's not so bad. You could still see them a little after sunset or a little before sunrise. Well, it sure seems like Starlink is causing quite a stir in the scientific community. Astronomers are up in arms about their observations being disrupted and the potential loss of romantic stargazing nights. But fear not, because Elon Musk has a solution for everything, apparently. Let's see what he has in store for us. So we might enjoy the spectacle of the train of lights passing by in the night sky. There's a lot more to consider when it comes to Starlink. That's it for today. Stay curious, stay starry-eyed, and remember, there's a whole universe out there just waiting to be explored. Until next time, keep reaching for the stars. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button to stay notified on our newest space updates. And don't hesitate to leave a comment.